The final presentations are ready. It's time now to hear their final pitches. Will Abhinav wear his fizzy goblet sneakers to win the race, or will Shreyas and Level 10 Comics script another victory? Very excited at this uh, juncture. I'm feeling excited and I can't wait for the presentations to begin. It marks the end of our journey with the pitch. It's, it's, it's a bit emotional at this stage. Well, it's uh, time for me to head into my presentation. Here's hoping for the best. Well, we're down to the final two presentations of season one of The Pitch. It has been inspiring, it has been heartwarming, and it has been most definitely awesome. Shreyas, Abhinav, congratulations. It's not been an easy journey. It would have been great, especially in the semi-finals. The two of you did so well, so I think you should be very proud of yourselves. So I believe, Abhinav, you have won the toss. Yes. So you will serve and you will receive. Yes. <laughs> Which means, Reyes, we will have to ask Abhinav to leave the room. And you will have 15 minutes straight off to tell us what you think, your findings, your presentation. We would like to wish you both the very best. Five crores here at stake. And all of us seem to be nervous for some strange reason. For the two of you, honestly, because we need to do a really, really good job so that we give the worthy winner the prize. So Abhinav, since you've chosen to bat second, how you go? No specific strategy as such. I think I'm just going to try to construct my presentation as logically as possible. These will be put to test by Mr. Y.C. Deveshwar when we present to him. I think that's where uh, the key will lie today. Good afternoon, gentlemen. My name is Shreya Srinivas. The way I've planned this presentation is that I'm going to start by uh, First, attempting to explain what each of us should do next, then going on to specific ideas and how do we empower farmers, and finally talking about my own venture and what we feel about building social and environmental capital. What did we do first when we first started each of us? We first started by building an access route to a rural market where there was none. People did not have a way to reach this market and therefore this market was not yet open. Each of us made headway by opening up an entirely new market. The next step, we built a market, we took money from there and we pumped back goods and services, thereby creating a very harmonious whole market economy. It's almost like seeing a civilization emerge. Now with each of our 3.0, by providing access to mobiles, to employment opportunities, we are now building an economy there. If you look at stuff like Darjeeling tea, is there an opportunity to take this geographical indicators and brand them? Who better to do it than just then ITC. And last but not the least, I think uh, irrigation and land productivity. Today, only about 48% of India's land is arable. Mango seeds do not, mango plants do not require arable land for them to grow. Such small opportunities by just handing out mango seeds, you are able to improve the productivity and the return per acre of land. Broadly, those are my thoughts on what we should do when it comes to each of all and taking you to the next level. Uh, I'll now get back to what I do and where we see the triple bottom line approach fit within our strategy in the longer run. This is exactly what we do. We are in the business of storytelling. Today, storytelling does not require a formal educational background. It does not, it is not limited by one's knowledge of English. Anybody sitting anywhere in this country can have a great story to tell. If you look at JK Rowling, she was a single mother and she came up with Harry Potter. There are great stories to tell in our country, except that there is no avenues for, it, for us to take it to market. By crowdsourcing these IP, we can really start to see if there is a global market for their content. And if there is, this will open up all new tires of market. The best stories can come from grandmothers, you never know. And finally, our biggest environmental impact is because of the fact that we are in the print business. We consume paper on a day-to-day -day basis. But as time moves forward, one of our uh, key initiatives will be to reduce our dependence on print and thereby our consumption of paper and move into alternate platforms such as television, such as uh, mobile phones and the computer screen. For too long, we've been dependent on entertainment from abroad. This is an opportunity for us to take content which is indigenous and take it out to the world and show them that we are world class in what we do. I rest my case, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Shreya. Absolutely uh, wonderful. I think you're right. Grandmothers do tell the best stories and your story today has been not bad at all. 
So I'd like to ask you. Do you think uh, by abandoning use of paper is more environment friendly than to increase use of paper, which is from renewable sources? But overall, if there is a market demand which is going down in paper and there is a demand that is growing up in mobile and digital content, it could be that if the business does not dictate it, it might make more sense for us to move into recyclable paper. But that is a call that we will have to take two, three years down the line. How many people, how many kids will you have who will have iPads and who will have telephones uh, from where they can watch this? So if you want to really serve society, your message through your comics has to reach sections of society which will use comics to get educated or to learn. So I do not do not put paper. Lack of use of paper is not environment friendly. But use of paper through renewable sources is much more environment friendly than use of electronics. That was something I did not know, so I'll take that back. So I, I bring this to your attention. Point noted. Shreya, I think I must compliment you for a number of interesting ideas you generated in a quick time. You talked about Rural Entrepreneurship Fund, but besides funding, what else you think are required as a complementary services? I think the first and most important thing is to build know-how. You will have to invest in some manpower to sit across these each of our initiatives and some skill building, which is something that you're already trying to get into. With those skill building, if you're not just able to build skills for, let's say, the healthcare sector, for example, but you're able to equip them to create small businesses themselves. If that is not something that you see happening immediately, I would see its role more in a mentorship format wherein you're building skills and you're acting as an interface for them to get access to the right kind of people. Yeah, I think this, uh, this man is very creative. He's quick to absorb uh, how sustainable these are. Uh, it cannot be done in 15 minutes otherwise. Uh, but we will, we will definitely look at your, uh, give us a printout of uh, what you've got and then uh, we will uh, challenge our people. Well, wow. that's quite a compliment, actually. Thank you so much. It's, it's been a privilege and an honor. My presentation went as expected. I, uh, I think the only hiccup in today's presentation was that I did not get enough time to rehearse the presentation. So I was making these slides as I was presenting. So it was very, very close. I think uh, I could have done slightly better there, but uh, in retrospect, it's all good, so right now it's all feeling like it's the distant past, so I'm just happy. Firstly, he's absorbed the each of our model very well in a short time. Then his, his methodology, the thinking process uh, is outstanding in terms of creating a solution. It's been done extremely well and it's very impressive. Yeah, I think interestingly, yeah, he has not stopped with one idea and said, okay, this is what I'll do with this. Yeah. But generate multiple options and then uh, explore along those vectors. I think that's also very yeah. useful. This is a kind of uh, future generation uh, with, with this kind of bandwidth and thinking capacity. Um, I, I think we have we really go a long way. I wish I would live very long to be able to see the outcome. <laughs> This is what I've been waiting for the whole time, the, the final presentation and the final chance that I get and if I win this then it's a winner take all so I'm very excited. Good afternoon sir. Uh, first I'm going to start with the first question put forward which is how do you uh, further empower the Indian farmers using the existing e-chopal? How do you further empower these farmers? Firstly, I will say educating individual farmers in other fields. I know the focus till now through all the various versions has been on farming and how to improve that. However, I feel that other things can also be taught to them. For example, HR management in basic terms for a farmer. How if you have labors below you, under you working, how do you keep them motivated? How do you get them going? How do you... So such simple basic things and other things as well as interests that farmers have. Say he likes handicrafts or he likes he, he likes managing a business or any anything. Stuff like that can also be educated to farmers and in the long run it can be beneficial for both. Another thing is traceability. So ITC can first design a set of uh, standards for the various crops or, or products. Then they can help the farmers achieve these, these in terms of benchmarks on standards. And then they can trace them through the supply chain till they reach the eventual uh, retail front. This will ensure that ITC can also get a higher margin in terms of uh, the quality will be assured and checked by ITC as well as the farmers because then not only will their quality improve as well as uh, it will provide more uh, transparency in terms of the entire supply chain. 
shift the focus to health and education. Once the entire infrastructure is already in place and farmers are already getting a hang of it and using it to improve, I would say shift the uh, focus of those to health and education not only for farmers but for the entire families, entire social groups, entire villages. Another thing is women employment. Now there is uh, employment for women. Next is create a channel to send handicraft like pottery or you can move it to other handicrafts as well. And use the existing infrastructure to not only train but market, sell, distribute, everything. Uh, lastly, I want to answer the question which comes to my business model and how that's going to uh, help the environment and social capital. Firstly, that these are hand-painted shoes. Hand-painted, I have been asked many times that why, how will you uh, support for masses? Suppose you get a mass order, how will you do that? The simple answer for that is hire more painters. So in future, if we get funded, we'll open a school where we'll train artists and people who are interested in art as well as kids and children and uh, women to try and paint and then improve. Another thing is there's this company called Tom's Shoes. What they did is for every shoe that you order, they gave one shoe to the poor. This is what we have always been uh, thinking of from the day one, that we need to implement something like this. So this will create a big uh, social benefit. We just had an exhibition wherein we actually delivered the shoes in bags, uh, paper bags. We did not create packaging. So this will be an innovative way in itself to uh, benefit the environment. We also plan to implement uh, low toxic materials when we design our own shoes. Uh, that's my presentation. Did you think of using the e-chopal uh, to promote your own shoe business? It is a very good idea because uh, we can directly, that's what I try to integrate from my shoe business where I, I have to actually go to rural places and paint. That's what I said, if you push handicrafts and pottery, it can even, we can even push stuff like hand-painted shoes and hand-painted t-shirts to rural places. So it will provide em employment for not only the farmers but even their wives and children and other people interested. You said something about using a reusable bag yes, for carrying these. I mean, what material will it be made we of? Have a, we have cotton bags, a normal uh, bag which you pull a string that tightens. So you, we put our shoes in that and we delivered those and then the bag can be used for anything. Do you, do you visualize uh, a product at a, at a lower end for rural markets? Actually, the, the plan was that if we can't get the hand-painted shoes for the rural market, we can provide them with shoes and let them paint their own shoes. Because that is a lot more feasible for us. Will your high-end customers like this, that uh, you know, all kinds of people are, are uh, using painted shoes? Or would they, your high-end customers like exclusivity? The high-end customers will be targeted with a product which will not be repeated and not be put up online. So, so if I have a pair of shoes and I paid a lot of money for that, nobody will even have a chance to get the same pair of shoes. In terms of a high-end design and a low-end, I'll just show you the difference. The one on the right is a high-end customized design which is supposed to, which was based around a two-face theme. However, the one on the left is a simple basic design which you're planning to retail which just has a few blocks and a face traced on that. If I had a choice, I'd pay more money for the left hand. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Kind of well finished a minute or two before time. They like the ideas, they, they, they like the product in terms of fizzy goblet. They went off okay. And he's just 21. Yeah, I remember. But that's not good. When I was 21, I, I didn't know the meaning of word presentation. There is a qualitative uh, difference in, in, in the entire uh, approach to addressing just the problem. The yeah. Although his presentation itself, he was articulate, he was bright, he was quick, he put his points yeah. across. The decision is uh, already made. Already made. Did you have a really, really bad moment on this show? I'm going to ask Mr. Diveshwar to make that handshake. It's a departure from the usual format.